If you go to a house that's a strip club in the woods down a dirt road with no lights in Dothan, Alabama, those bitches are ferocious! <laughs> Welcome to This Is Not Happening presents World of Blunder. If you've never been to the show before, it's just a bunch of comics telling fun stories about real shit that happened. Give it up for my friend and yours, Mr. Joe Rogan, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? What's going on? Uh, I've been traveling, doing stand-up comedy for a long time. Uh, I started going on the road back in 1998. And that was, uh, I, I started going on the road because of Dice Clay. Uh, we were at the comedy store one night, he's like, you should do the road. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> he's willing to talk to me, I'll listen. You know? And uh, I, I started going on the road, both doing stand-up comedy and working for the Ultimate Fighting Championship, which back then was really like doing porn. <laughs> like, you, in 1998, you didn't want to tell people that, you, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm going to see a cage fighting event in Dothan, Alabama. <laughs> I'm working. So I, I fly into this place and I'm hanging out with these, these fighters. I'm in my 20s and I'm completely baffled by the whole situation. I was like, you ever see that cartoon where there's two dogs? There's a little dog that's uh, hanging out with the big dog and the little dog's like, where are we going, Spike? <laughs> and the, little, the big dog's like, shut up. Okay, I was the little dog. And I'm just hanging out with a slew of dudes who can rape me. And one of them wants to go out. And if you're around like these big, giant, like this one dude, let's just call him Bob. We'll call him Bob. It's not his real name, but Bob was this giant wrestler dude who's like 250 pounds of American muscle and Mexican supplements. And we're hanging out in Dothan, Alabama. What does Bob want? Bob wants to get some pussy. Man, there's got to be some pussy in this town, man. I mean, literally, that's all he wants to do. And we're, we're there with this other dude who is the local DJ. You know, we have to do, like, morning radio to promote the event. There's this big event down there. And morning radio guy talks like morning radio guy. He's like, what do you guys want to do? There's a voice that somehow or another they're all allowed to use. And it's not like, you know, you're doing a real, like, he's doing Jack Nicholson. No, they're all just doing the voice they do at work. It's basically the same thing as the strip club DJ voice. They're, it's very interchangeable. <laughs> DJ guy's like, hey, I know where the girls are. There's a club just outside of town. Let's head out there right now. So we get in his car. We hop in DJ guy's car, and we start going out of town. And we're in homeboy's car, and he's playing you know, his station. We're talking, and, and Bob is like, man, there got to be some pussy around here, man. I'm telling you, dude, there got to be some pussy around here. And we start going down a dirt road. I notice there's no more lights. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, this is where it is. So we go down this dirt road. This is all a true story. We Down this dirt road, there's no lights. And we get to a house. It's a fucking house. And it ha the house has a nylon sign. Like one of those signs, you know, like, you know, you see like temporary sign. And it just says, gentlemen's club. <laughs> At a fucking house. And I'm like, oh shit, this is a mistake, man. <laughs> I'm awake, I'm sober now, I'm not high again. So I'm thinking this is a terrible, terrible place to be. And he's like, man, I hope there's some pussy in there. So I go out with him, and the DJ guy's like, we go there all the time, don't worry about it, buddy. Come on in, all right. We walk in the door, it's a fucking regular door. There's like bookshelves, people have their shoes there. There's a fucking staircase, like this is insanity, man. We go in this room, and if you've ever been to, not like an established, beautiful place like Cheetah's, have you, ever, have you ever been to a, a strip club? Have you ever made a mistake and gone to a house with a vile gentleman's club sign in the middle of Dothan, Alabama? You will notice that there's a strange thing about the food chain when it comes to strip clubs. And the less attractive have to be the most aggressive. It's sort of how nature balances itself out. It's like... You know, hyenas are desperate as fuck. They gotta make shit happen right away, all right? They're not turtles where there's plenty of food and they live to be a thousand. No, they gotta get shit done right now. So if you go to a house that's a strip club with a vinyl sign in the woods down a dirt road with no lights in Dothan, Alabama, those bitches are ferocious. They fucking
fucking move on you, man. You don't get a chance to sit down. They're on you, okay? And it's a strange scene, man. First of all, there's like, it's, the only thing that makes strip club-ish is that there's red light bulbs. They're using red light bulbs, okay? So I sit down, the train is like, man, where's the pussy on this place, man? And he's looking around, and this girl immediately comes up to me, and there's a thing that uh, a, a gal will do when she's trying to get you to do a private dance with her, and that thing is to immediately put her knee where your penis is, okay? And then they move into you and start talking to you. This is a sexy pose, okay? But not when you're wearing sweatpants and wrestling shoes, okay? And your breath smells like you ate 150 shit sandwiches and had a drunken mariachi band fart in your mouth for a year. This chick steps up. I'm not bullshitting, man. She's wearing fucking sweatpants and she's got wrestling shoes on and she's gangster. She's like, do you want to dance? Do you want to dance? And it fucking hits me like a broken fire hydrant of stink. It's just, bah! What to do? And I'm a polite person. I try to be nice. We're all different. I don't. I don't know how she got here. So I'm sitting here, and all I can think of, all I can think of, is I have a girlfriend. She doesn't let me get dances. So she starts doing all this. You don't know what the fuck you're missing. You don't know what the fuck you're missing. I'm a badass bitch. I'm a badass bitch. You don't know what the fuck you're missing. And I'm like, oh, I'm never going to get out of here alive, man. That's all I'm thinking is, I have fucked up. This is like a fucking movie. You take the wrong turn, then eight hours later, you're pleading for your life in a basement. I'm like, this is a fucking disaster. So I got to find the train killer. So I go over, I'm like, man, we got to get the fuck out of here. I get up to him, and he has found the only attractive girl within miles. And she has gravitated towards his alpha presence. And she's sitting in his lap, and she weighed 90 pounds. I know this because he told me. <laughs> She's in his lap, and he looks over me and goes, She only about 90 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I know this exa happened exactly this way. He goes, That pussy's gotta be tight. <laughs> like that's, like, could you imagine breaking a human being down to that? He was calculating mass and size and. It's a good one. It's a keeper. That's a fucking keeper, man. That's a keeper. So, you know, he's with this girl, and, you know, they're asking questions. One of the things that he did was the girl would point to every other man in the room. She would go like this, like, what about him over there? He goes, him over there. I'll take him like this right here. <laughs> <laughs> he did that, like, he did that, like, ten times. <laughs> ten different guys do I'm, I'm, you know, the other girl's still on the other side of the room. You don't know what the fuck you're missing. You don't know. So I'm like, man, I got to get the fuck out of here. I'm completely sober at this point. And I'm like, hey, dude, why don't you ask your friend if she wants to get the fuck out of here, right? He's like, hey, you want to get the fuck out of here? He's like, I'll go if my friend can go. She'll go if her friend can go. Who's her friend? Shit breath! <laughs> of course her friend is shit breath. So we hop in DJ Mr. Nice's car. Kiss 107.5 is fucking whatever it is. He's in, all right, everybody get in the car. So the train killer and the 90 pounder in the back seat, but shit breath wants to sit on my lap. <laughs> he said, well, there ain't no fucking room back there. Come on, dog. What's up? There ain't no room back there. There's very few things less attractive yeah. than when you're on a dirt road and a fucking road with no lights and you go to a house and there's a vinyl sign that says gentlemen's club and a girl with shit breath wearing wrestling shoes and sweatpants <laughs> also talks black. <laughs> she's white and she's got freckles. And she's like, come on, dog, let me sit in your lap, dog. And I'm like, you can't sit in my lap. My girlfriend doesn't let girls sit in my lap. You don't know what the fuck you're missing. And she keeps, she keeps doing this shit to the back of my head. She's behind me with the 90 pounder and the train killer. Yeah. You don't know what the fuck you're missing. You don't know I'm a badass bitch. I'm just thinking, we're going to get to the hotel room, and I'm just going to get the fuck, this is all going to be a memory. Well, apparently, the train killer had realized that this is going to be a problem. And he was looking over, oh, man, she's going to be a problem, man. She's going <laughs> to fuck this up for me. So as soon as we pull into the hotel, the hotel is this, you know, this overpass thing, a little, little circular roundabout sort of a thing in the front with a roof on it. We pull into that thing. 
the fucking train killer kicks open the door, grabs the 90 pounder, and just starts running. <laughs> I mean, this motherfucker's clean. He's, he's got some fucking ass and squat legs on him, and he's just making leaps and bounds. Through, and there's no way. She's tied up in the seatbelt, and she's trying to get the, oh, no, you don't ditch me, motherfucker. So shit breath. Shipwreath is running after the train killer, but this motherfucker puts logs on his back and runs up stadium stairs. So he's just running with this girl. He gets her to the elevator. The elevator door is open. He turns and looks at Shipwreath and boom, just like a horror movie, the door shuts just in the nick of time. And this is 1997, 1998, whatever it was. There was no cell phones back then. You couldn't text your friend, OMG, what room are, letter R, you, letter U, in. No, he was gone. He was a, he was a ghost. That door shut. She had a thing. I don't even know if he was real. Like, I don't have a photo of him. I don't have a contact number. He doesn't have an email address. The door shut. He went to many floors and many rooms. It was over. It was over. But shit breath would not accept defeat. So she starts throwing a fucking hissy fit. Oh, no, motherfucker. No, you ain't doing this shit to me, motherfucker. And so she starts yelling to try to get attention. One of the managers runs over to her. Ma'am, what is the problem? Please, can we stop this? And she goes, I need to know where, she says his name, UFC motherfucker is all with my girl. We came together. We leave together. So wrestling, wrestling shoes, sweatpants, freckles, tank top. It's a mess. This is a disaster. Okay? You're the last person you want screaming in your lobby is a white girl with wrestling shoes on, sweatpants, talking like a black girl, obviously shit face drunk, looking for a cage fighter. <laughs> Who may or may not have kidnapped her friend, right? <laughs> so the manager comes over, they grab her by the arms, they're trying to get her out of there. She's like, I'll leave, motherfucker, I'll leave. I need to use the restroom. I need to use the restroom first. Which is one thing that drunks will always do. When drunks are kicked out of the bar, they always want to get that last victory. They just let me have a little something. Let me use the bathroom. They have this little thing. You can't just kick them out. No, 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 I'll go out, motherfucker, but I'm a human being. Won't you let me use the restroom real quick? Won't you? So they won't let her use the restroom. Like, ma'am, you cannot, you are rude, you're yelling, you're, you're awakening our people, you gotta get the fuck out of here. They push her outside the door. She doesn't take two steps from the door where she pulls her sweatpants down, pushes them forward, because she's done this before, all right? She knows not to piss on her sweatpants, because she's been there, done that. She's pushing the sweatpants forward, she's yelling at the hotel, go, y'all got me out here passing in the street like I'm some kind of fucking animal. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sitting in my car, just sitting in my car laughing my ass off, thinking this might be the best person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I got all the people that you will meet in your life that just will provide you with something you could think about forever. I've met some inspirational motherfuckers. But I think about her more than any of them. <laughs> I think about her all the time. I wonder if she's alive. I wonder if she has kids. I wonder if she still works at that house. Yeah. Thank you very much. You guys are gonna share. Joe Rogan, everybody. That's Joe Rogan. Thank you very much for doing it. Um, wow, what a disgusting story. <laughs> what happened to that girl? <laughs> what is she doing now? She's gotta be a mother. She's gotta be. Last week, I told you to leave me uh, some comments down here about the most disgusting stuff you've ever seen, and we got disgusting stories like this one. Next week, I'm gonna ask you to give me the best stripper names you've ever heard. So if you've ever been to a horrible strip club or a good one, leave on the comments below. Don't forget to click on the Reddit link, tag This Is Not Happening on Twitter. Don't forget to follow me. And that's it, everybody. I'll see you next Tuesday.